everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's play some Disco Elysium, shall we? Well, it's time to talk to the Union, and it's going to go great. I have a very, very good feeling about these guys. Let's do it. This is where you say your bit. Oh boy, look at this guy. His smug smile, he's just like, I'm going to give you a hard time. A broad-shouldered man points at you with a beer can. Wow, he's drinking at the start of the day. I mean, this guy is a man after my own heart. 8 a.m. Detective. The lieutenant acknowledges you with a sharp tone. He's leaving it to you. Don't say anything yet. First, we need to talk about your attitude. Um, I'm just not going to say anything. Hey, hey, dipshit. You hard of hearing or something? The boss man's talking to you. Oh, Glenn. Do not let their squeals disturb your serenity. These are but simple peasants, sire. Oh, boy. The chatter is too inane to reach your ears. Raise your chin and gaze into the distance like a prince. <laughs> Oh, uh, God. There's a part of me that, that likes this, but let's talk about the man out back. Oh, this is about him. A real looker, that one. Yeah, he is quite handsome. You're sure taking your time waiting for him to get ripe and pretty for you, huh? Yes, that's... How did you know? That's standard police procedure just to leave the body in a tree for weeks on end. Oh, he was a real pretty boy by now. Real hot stuff. Letting out that pretty boy smell. Boy. I tell you what, like, these guys are trying to give me a hard time, um, but, you know, the sarcasm and the grotesque way that they're describing the body... It all pales in comparison to Kuno. Like, you've got nothing. I've been through Kuno. Anything you're going to throw at me is garbage. Time to go to work in the shit factory! Hey, wait a minute. I heard that in my dream. Easy, boys. These janitors have a hell of a job cut out for them. I mean, I wouldn't go in there for a million. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You might want to start asking your questions now. It's not going to get better than this. Uh, thanks, Elizabeth. I appreciate your concern. Do a head count first. Connect these men to the tracks you saw in the yard. Chances are they're going to match. Scan the room. Starting from the right. Boot size, 44. Blonde man, in his 30s overbearingly masculine well i mean yeah really masculine but the long flowing blonde hair you know suggests something sitting on his right Whoa. standard working boots size 45 or 46 eldest in the room probably mid 50s smoker quiet he is quiet across at the other table, hmm. hobnailed working boots, size 43, gang tattoos, Mesk or Sarah Maritzian in his late 30s, early 40s. Okay. He spent his youth in Villa Labos, a housing project in the Jamra Quarter. There were incarcerations. Hard to say what else. The ink is fading. So this is the information I'm getting from his tattoos, his gang tattoos, that tell his story. And then... Standard working boot, steel reinforced toes, size 46, the big dick, wide at the shoulders and lean at the hips, rugby cap, fingerless gloves, and numerous scars, a little under 40. Great. The emblem on his vest says Rowan Club. A little patch below it reads T. Hardy, Captain. Huh. He's in the rowing club. In the far corner, standard working boot, steel reinforced toes, size 44, 40 something, non-alcoholic beverage in hand, 
You squint. Is that a plectrum? Where? On his neck. Forget it. It's not important. <laughs> oh. Let's call this one the musician. Okay. Size 41, with the light step. Not a child, after all. An older man, with a rat face, mean, watery eyes, and two front teeth missing. Yeah, nothing like the name Shanky. In the middle, heaving and wheezing. Big guy, boot size 46, deep marks. Probably carried the victim over. He alone is 130 kilos. Add the man in armor, and you could easily exceed 220. I see. In conclusion, these seven are the actors on the crime scene. The footprints were theirs, but there's a discrepancy. One of them is missing, the odd soul. Exactly. You've stood there for about four seconds, not saying anything. Hit them with questions. Where's the eighth Hardy? Yeah. The fuck is with you, fella? I found eight set of footprints, but there's only seven of you. Where's the eighth Hardy boy? What are you talking about, madman? There's no eighth Hardy boy. There's seven of us, and we're all here. He sizes you up. Or what? You want to be the eighth Hardy boy? We ain't hiring. You're not? Aww. Actually, boss, we've been talking and we think she could maybe... Shut the fuck up, Glenn! She? I do the talking here. Now what the fuck do you want? Interesting. Talk? She. Are they talking about... Elizabeth? I don't think so. But are they talking about... The woman who bought my gun? Or Cindy the Skull? I'm trying to like think about all the females in the area, you know, that could fit the description. It has to be good if he won't let you pursue it. Looks like the lieutenant thinks so too. Yeah. So let me get this straight. There is an ace hardy boy. It's a she, and you don't like us talking about her? Yeah. That's right. We're not talking about this. This is a private hardy boys matter. Nothing to do with your shit. And he points it to Lieutenant. You're not cops here. Don't go digging around if you don't want a bullet in the back of your head. I'm watching you. Oh yeah. Good. We are all watching each other. Officer, your question. Uh huh. There's no point in pushing it further. He thinks this is already a victory. We'll learn more about this eighth Hardy sooner or later. Yeah, this is a victory. The man hanged in the backyard. Did you do it? The pretty boy. You guys really love talking about that pretty boy. So do you, apparently. You have this very sensual way of discussing a corpse. Funny. But my partner and I have a serious matter to discuss with you. Why is there a container belt around the dead man's neck? Container belt? Like we use in the harbor? Yes, why? Because we took it from the harbor where we work. Then we went out back and used it to hang him. I see. We did this together, all of us, until he was dead. That's why there's a container belt around his neck. That's it. The game's over. We got the perpetrator. So you just confessed to murder? No, you don't. What you have is seven honest men who thought it forthcoming to tell you what happened so that you don't waste any more of your time. What? Okay, they're honest. They told me they killed him, but how does that make him not the perpetrator? All seven together. They're diluting responsibility. Ah. It's an anti-arrest tactic. You murdered him just like that? No remorse? How many people have you sent to the Shays? Ever felt remorse for them? Shays Electrique is the method of capital punishment in ah. Ravishol. 
under the coalition. During the suzerain's reign, it used to be the firing squad. Great. For send them to reunion to rot. For 20 years. For life. He says it is if it were worse than dying. Hmm. What we do is different. We enforce the law. You just kill people like it's nothing. But you see, a law, lawman, is something people agree upon. And here in Martinez, we agreed that this man had to die. Okay. This isn't something he came up with on the spot. Oh, It's his standard reasoning, a product of many years of being Titus Hardy. Cool. I made the challenging role. Um... When did this hanging incident occur? You don't have to answer any of his questions. I know, Lizzie. Relax. Mm. We killed him last Sunday night. Seemed like a good way to end the week. How long had you known the victim? Known him? We don't associate with scum like that, asshole. Okay. Yeah! Who do you think we are? I... Uh, the Hardy Boys? Quiet. He came around about three weeks ago when that Pines cow first sailed into town. Happy? Ah, so he was with her. He was with Joyce. By the Pines cow, you mean Joyce Messier? The representative for White Pines? The same company you are striking against? Hmm. No. I mean the Pines cow. The stupid ass cow they sent in to fuck us over. But you know what? He rubs his chin, pretending to mull it over. Why don't you ask her about the pretty boy? I'm sure she has interesting things to say when you ask her hard enough. Okay. That's enough insinuation for today, Titus. Officer, your interview is drawing to an end. Don't waste your last questions. Why'd you kill him? Why? Because he was worthless mercenary scum. And... He stepped out alive in my town. So he was a mercenary, that's it? I am. He stepped out of line. He repeats, jaw clamped shut like what a vice. What kind of mercenary? Yeah, what kind? The kind that shows up when you start a strike. The experienced kind, too. Had Kohoi and Semenine written all over him. ex oranese special forces. I see. A live grenade, right here in our bar. Oh, Eugene's chiming in. This one has a special gripe with him coming here. Okay. I can't prove it, but I know he was sent by the Wild Pines. They hire merc shit like that. Story of every strike from here to Samara. How do you know he was special forces? Because one night, he walked straight up to the mic and said, I'm R&E's goddamn special forces, and I'm gonna fuck you all! Really? What a tactic. Really? Yeah, really. Had a gin and tonic up there, sang some R&E's paratrooper song, and said he's gonna fuck everyone. Wow. We couldn't believe it either, but he fucking did. Right there. Like some kind of animal. Sire, the tale is true. It is. This is a serious violation of the karaoke code. <laughs> What's the karaoke code? Um, okay, besides crimes against karaoke, what did he actually do wrong? Wrong? He harassed women. What? Raped one. What? Harassed workers. Threatened to kill some as a warning. All right, so maybe this guy was... I mean, he, not maybe. He's terrible. Okay, so what, am I on... Am I starting to root for the Hardy Boys here? What's going on? From rape, to harassment, to threats of violence. Why the strange de-escalation? It is, that is interesting. You know, it, it went backwards. He regrets mentioning it. Hopes you didn't notice. Mmm. To kill us all, if we don't open the gates, if we don't let the scabs in, if we don't bend over... 
That was before he started coming here. Okay. Yeah, he said it was his favorite joint now. He started coming here every night. Drinking, grabbing girls, grab one of ours mid-karaoke, right there on the stage. Okay, which girl? He grabbed someone? The lieutenant is trying to make sense of this flood of information. Yeah, I have to say, like, I knew these guys were going to give me a hard time, and they did at first, but now they're just, like, I mean, spilling the beans. Yeah. This girl's on the mic. A beautiful girl. Young. Gets into the second verse of Love a Lake. The fucker grabs her legs, starts screaming. What? Show me your cunt. Why don't you show me your cunt? Oh, then, my God. he gets knocked on the head with a wine bottle doesn't even fall down was this the same girl who was sexually assaulted aren't you fucking listening my man is talking to you he took care of it they got the girl out before anything else could happen okay yeah me and Eugene got around aren't you fucking listening okay well I'm just trying to piece everything together sorry guys there's something odd here yeah there is something odd here seems like they don't want to talk about that rape titus mm -hmm. mentioned why not this is a serious allegation make them talk about it yeah rhetoric right but who did he rape then this is a very serious allegation no you're not getting the name that's a martin a's matter I'm not discussing it with you clowns. Okay, thank you. There's nothing you can do for now. He's stonewalling you. Thanks. Um, who called the shots? Are you deaf? There will be no singling anyone out. You can't arrest a hardy boy without arresting all hardy boys. Okay. I like how they keep asking me if I'm deaf. It's, you know, it's such a weird question to ask someone because asking the question, are you deaf, implies that they can hear so you know the answer to your own question. It's very confusing. It also, like, has this real derogatory sense toward deafness. Like, it's, a, it's an insult, you know? Um... It's a bad thing for this person to be. So, you know, I don't like your disabledist, ableist, anti hate speech filled rhetoric with its poorly used rhetorical question. Get out of here. Do you think you could do that? Do you think you could arrest them all? A shadow of a smirk passes her lips as she tilts her lip, her head. I should just arrest her. I'm gonna arrest you. You're going to reunion for life, Elizabeth. A trick question. Don't let her lead the conversation. Address Elizabeth. I don't have to. One of them was more complicit than the others. No, but seriously, who calls the shots around here? Who do you fucking think does? He sounds more amused and angry. Interesting. Point at Titus. You do. You give the commands. Point at Elizabeth. I thought she did. Bow to the bearded man. Gangs are usually run by the oldest, most venerable. Remember, it's the eighth hardy boy. The one who's missing. The big dick. Titus, no one was thinking. Interesting. A moment of silence. The long-haired one breaks it. That there's any question who's the leader. That's how he would have ended it. Uh-huh. Titus won't let him. No. 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 Fuck no! The big dick is right here, asshole. You're looking at it. Right. Fucking here. Is that right? Disregard the outburst, officer. None of the boys have any comments on their power relations. That night, they acted as one. That's all. Okay. How did you kill we him? We hanged him up by his neck. 
until he got real still. Wasn't that obvious, copper? Yeah, but the tree... Didn't they teach you anything at the cop school, idiot? They did. This is where an autopsy would come in handy. You have to work with what you know. Um, we need more. Did you muffle him? We haven't heard any reports of screams. Titus, you don't have to clarify anything. Okay. We overpowered him. Dragged his unconscious body to the tree. Put a noose around his neck. And hanged him till he was dead and steady. Okay. Then we left him for seagulls, maggots, and you fucks. Shanky's a real talker. Make them a bit more uncomfortable first. Then see if it all adds up. Okay. Um, wasn't he a trained killer from Special Forces? How'd you manage to overpower him? With numbers, asshole. How do you think? You're right, Lizzie. I've done enough explaining here. Uh-oh. No, he hasn't. Not yet. Uh-huh. Where did this overpowering happen? Weren't you fucking listening? The fucker came to our bar. It happened right here. Okay. Um, Shanky might be lying. This is a tough throw. I gotta try it. I don't feel good about Titus it. Titus is Ooh. solid as a rock. We got it. And so are a few others. But. Ah. First. Okay, so I'm talking to Composure. I was like thinking, am I asking them this question? No, I'm talking to Composure. Who's solid? Elaine. Who looks like he might be Titus's right hand man, the least antsy of the bunch. Definitely not his first time being questioned by the police. Okay. This little rat faced fellow is solid, too. Always fidgety, yes, but no change there. Mm hmm. Him neither. Mostly keeps to his tomato juice or whatever he's got there. Okay, and who's cracking? <laughs> this one. He's sweating profusely and has difficulty breathing. They've smartly kept him out of the conversation thus far. Definitely the weakest link in the chain. Hey, you. You having trouble breathing over there? No. He looks up, startled, his forehead shiny from sweat. A few coiled locks are peeking out from under his warm woolen hat. Of course he's having trouble breathing. Just look at how fucking fat he is. <laughs> The man next to the big guy bursts out Fuck laughing. Fuck off, Shanky. Angus is a powerful guy. All muscle. Oh, yeah? Keep your eye on this powerful guy. Sooner or later, he's going to break like a piece of twig. Okay, powerful guy. There's something you're not telling and me. fuck you, too, copper. Picking on Angus like this. We're done with this schoolyard shit. And just so you know, he doesn't. Have trouble breathing. Okay. His all-muscle comment wasn't sarcastic. He's genuinely trying to look out for Angus. Okay. This one is a stone wall. You won't get more out of them about the night of the murder. Not yet. Right. I have some other questions about the lynching. Like what, copper? Why don't I just arrest you? Yeah, lawman. Why don't you? It's almost an anthropological sight, watching him try to assert dominance over you. Mm. Not in the arresting mood? His mean little eyes come alive with hatred. By your side, the lieutenant keeps his hand away from his holster. You hear the nylon of his coat hiss as he steps closer. You confess to murder. I'm taking you in. What, how do I want to handle this? Um, I don't have enough information. Easy now. Let's just talk. Wise move. You made the right choice there. Now make another one. And get the fuck out of our booth. We're not going to do this again. So what are we going to do now? Nothing. Your investigation here is done. I got to prove my authority. Leave Martinez. Go back to your stations where you belong. Okay. I think we're going to stick around, thanks. Some things don't add up here, Titus. The lieutenant closes his I've done notebook. this job for long enough to know that people don't just confess to first-degree murder. Even if it is a group responsibility, we're going to look into this. You're darn right we Good are. Good luck with that. 
You've heard everything a rent-a-cop is gonna hear from us real law officials. You're lucky you didn't get a beaten. I have to, um... Discuss authority, but I'm not gonna do it here. I'm gonna leave now. Okay. I did it. It wasn't good, but I did it. You see hawthorn bushes outside. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Behind the dock workers, a ceiling height window. The hawthorn branches scrape the glass like bony fingers. Squint. There's a little slide panel up there to let some air in. No need to open it in spring. It's still too cold outside. Ah, uh, it's not time yet. Um, let's go ahead and, and try it. I have to roll Nothing. 12. That's actually Just a good roll. Just black tangles like the hair of an old woman. Revert your gaze. All right. Okay. Oh, there's some money. Don't mind if I do, Hardy boys. Boom. All right. Well, interesting. We have our appointment later tonight. And we can work on that. But in the meantime, maybe I should talk to Joyce again. I haven't found my badge, and she can't show me the stuff until I do. Um, but I'm not getting past Measurehead anytime soon. I need some kind of... I need a break. So let's see. Um, prove your authority. I need help from the union boss. Look for a witness. Tie them to other crimes. I need to find the cryptozoologist. Um, I also need to close the water lock on Wednesday. Um... I need to go to the fishing village, but I think I have to cross the water lock, um, perhaps. I need to do her a favor. That's not easy to do. Will any of these, like, will ever this be the right thing to do? Talking, you know, into this box. I don't know. Alright, anyway. Oh, look at this guy. I've never seen... Is this Gart? Who is this dude? Working class woman. You see a sturdy woman humming to herself. She seems to be browsing books. A good one? Point at yes. the book. Hello? She nods, her attention fully focused on reading. Who are you? Me? No one. I'm just a working class woman. I see. She doesn't really want to be disturbed that much. I get it. If she's such a working class woman, why isn't she working? Yeah, shouldn't a working class woman be working? Not all the time. Right now I'm browsing books. Even a working class woman needs something to read. Good, good, no. It is. I'm a policeman. I know you are. Okay. Everyone can see that. The rectangles. Do you need... The help of a policeman. What with? Maybe your husband is missing? My husband? No, he's not. So where could he be? I don't know. At home now? Out drinking with his friends? Working? Uh -huh. Where is this going, officer? So what I'm hearing is you don't really know where your yes, husband is. I don't really need to know where my husband is. Not all the time. But wouldn't you like to? I can surveil him. No. Suit yourself. I don't really care if he's missing. Why are we still talking about this? I haven't lost my husband. Uh-huh. She has, though. The husband is totally lost. You should tell her that it's okay. Empathy. It's okay. What? It's not... It's all right to not know where your husband is. Nothing shameful in Who that. Who said anything about shame? Stop talking down to me. My husband is not missing. Mm. But he is. You can feel it. Or maybe it's something else then. 
Maybe your children are no, missing? No, absolutely not. Oh, her words come out quick as gunshots. Okay, so where are, are you they? Are a policeman or a nanny? I police whatever I want. Where are they? They are not missing, sir. Ah. You know where they are. They're at home. Smoking. Giving the ladder of vices a chance. They're at home, right? Smoking cigarettes? What? That's just... My daughters are perfectly fine. They're with their friends down in Jambrock. There's nothing to worry about. Really? They're almost grown up now anyway. They're past the age they need me protecting them from everything now. I'm afraid the danger now is greater than ever. Tell me, how old are they? My youngest girl, Jolie, is just shy of 16. Jenny, she is turning 18 next month. But we shouldn't even be talking about them. And can you describe me their appearance? Any features that stand out? Something to make identifying a little easier? Why do you need to know this? Haven't I repeatedly told you that they are not missing? That they are in Jamrock, safe and well, at some stupid party? It's for the investigation. I'm trying to be professional. There is no investigation here. I can tell you that. She picks up a book and tries to concentrate. A flock of seabirds passes by. Okay, it must be asked then. What are you doing here? Why are you pursuing this? Is it a hunch? I don't know, but uh, yeah, I am pursuing it. Is your cockatoo missing? I don't mean to disrespect, sir, but you are being a bit of a cockatoo here. Uh -huh. For what it's worth, I agree. But cockatoos can't be stopped when they get ladies. It's better to indulge him at this point. Ma'am, I was asking about your cockatoo. Is it missing? I don't even have a cockatoo. And guess what? What? Great. Oops. Um. What did you mean by me being Nothing. a cockatoo? Go read up on them if you're so interested. There's a great book in the bookstore. Oh, okay. Maybe you should. What if the cockatoo is your astral captain? Or your heraldic bird? Actually, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to read up on cockatoos. Wonderful. The store is open. Watch her brows move. Her hands move over the book covers. The tips of her fingers look rough, stained with yellow. It seems like she has spent a lot of time at work, smoking. I see. Another comrade. Years of labor are pressing down on her shoulders. She deserves a hug for all the work she's done for mankind. I'm going to give her a hug and she's not going to like it. You step in and close your arms around this foreign body, wandering astray in touch. There's a small movement beneath your hands as you shut your eyes. Then a tiny voice breaks out and asks, What is happening? <laughs> she seems to be confused. Your hands are wrapped around her polyester coat. The fabric feels cold, moist from the sea nearby. Keep hugging her. The situation is oddly intimate. Your cheek is pressed against her shoulder. Her hand is trapped between your chest. Five seconds pass, and their passing seems so unimaginable. Just hugging long. this woman. Then she coughs and says again, Uh, what are you doing, officer? Less talk, more feeling. Keep your eyes closed. Soak in the closeness. See what the feeling entails. Keep your eyes closed for a brief longer. The feeling continues. Warm and comfy on the cold shoreline. You hear a question rising to the surface, trying to break the sensation. Oh, here's a new thought. Let it form. So tell me, how does it feel to be close to someone, skin to skin? It all comes together now. I was built to be close with other I beings. I wonder how long it has been since you last hugged someone. Do I remember? No, you don't. And it's better that way. What do I remember? Oh. Don't come back here. Oh, no. But I need to remember. Oh, my God. Why are you calling me? Stop calling me. Oh. Are you drunk again? Keep him closed. I don't want to see you. Oh. I don't want to see you ever again. Stop calling me. Get lost from my life. You ruined it. Oh, man. <clears throat> Officer, what are you doing? 
I, I'm. I had the strangest. I'm not even sure. You had the strangest what? A strange conversation. Something went wrong in my it's head. It's okay. We all feel out of sorts at times. There you go, officer. Something begged me to open my eyes. It was scary. I'm sorry. I don't really understand what you're talking about. Nobody does. She lets go we of your We can take hug. a break if you're feeling unwell. He says to you under his Is breath. Is there anything else I can help you with? That's all for the moment. I'll let you read. The woman before you nods and returns to her reading. Hmm. Boy. I didn't think that that conversation was going to be that involved, but it really was. I was hugging her, and then I remembered breaking up with, I guess, the love of my life and how bad that went. That, uh, that really developed into something. So can I finally go into here? Yes. First time to get to go into this shop. I'm looking for leads on the murder. Okay, cool. Wow, look at this place. Great. All right. Well, everyone, this is a fantastic place to end the episode. We will continue exploring here next time. I'm going to look for a book on the cockatoo and try to break Titus, Hardy, Kuno, all of them. I want to thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have an excellent evening or day, and I'll check you guys next time in Let's Play Disco Elysium. Take care.